All right, guys, today we're going to be going over one of my favorite missing 411 cases. If you're not familiar with missing 411 and what it is, just go into YouTube, type it, type in missing 411 and uh, enjoy yourself for the rest of the week while you terrify yourself with the harsh realities of traveling in America's wilderness. Today, we're going to be going over an incredibly haunting case, one that I think about frequently. And that is the case of Alfred Bellharts, a three- or four-year-old kid, depending on what source you're reading, who lived in the United States in the late 1930s. Him and his family of 12 people, two parents and 10 siblings, all went to Rocky Mountain National Park. One morning, they, did, they decided to go on a hike up to a famous fishing spot. They walked single file down the trail with Alfred in the back. Now, you're kind of setting yourself up for trouble there. Having the four-year-old kid in the back of the line Anyway, so they decided that this was a good idea and that they were all going to go up to the fishing hole. Honestly, I totally understand where they're coming from. It's fun as a family to go outside, and it's also one of the cheapest ways to entertain 10 people is to go to a famous fishing hole. But why was he in the back of the line? That is something I simply will never understand. At some point along the hike, the parents realized that the worst had happened. They looked behind and realized that their beloved Alfred had gone. He was missing. He had fallen behind. Now, yes, I would freak out in this situation, but I would also understand that, hey, listen, he's four years old. He can't go far. Okay, this is Rocky Mountain National Park. If he even wanted to go somewhere, there'd be a tree, a bush, a rock in the way. They looked and looked and realized, wow, he was truly missing. They recruited a team of people, I say recruited, the National Park Rangers <laughs> kicked into gear immediately and there was an enormous search team. I think over, I think it was 165 people. They were all looking for Alfred. They even dammed up the local river and dredged the bottom to see if they could find his remains if he had unfortunately fallen in. They didn't find anything, which might've been a relief in a way, but they still had no idea where he had gone. At some point, they did deploy dogs to look for him, and these dogs have a great reputation. You see, search dogs are usually really good at what they do. Unfortunately, though, the dogs followed the trail, and at first, as they were following the scent trail, it made logical sense. Oh, maybe over, you know, maybe over some hills, through some trees. He had gotten really far for a four-year-old boy, and they realized this was getting a little ridiculous. Then the dogs went to the top of a mountain. They kind of walked in a circle and sat down. There's more than a few missing 411 cases where dogs do that exact thing, by the way. And unfortunately, that is kind of where the story ends. They never found Alfred. However, there are some other eyewitnesses to this event that contribute something quite terrifying to this whole narrative. Around the same time that Alfred had gone missing, there was a small group of hikers that had sat under a nice ridge, this being Rocky Mountain National Park. You know, that would make sense, obviously, that they would take a rest. They looked at the mountain across from them, which keep in mind, the mountains are pretty close, so it's pretty easy to make out what was going on. They saw a child that matched Alfred's description walk out to a ledge. Alfred kind of walked around, looked at the hikers, screamed, a shrill, shrill scream, and then something yanked the child away. His parents believe this is the last time Alfred was ever seen. Now, what yanked that child away is what makes this interesting. We can start to postulate and wonder what exactly or who exactly took Alfred. Well, if it was a mountain lion, that's obviously pretty weird behavior for a mountain, a mountain lion to just reach out its hand and just yank a child with one hand behind a rock so that the hikers couldn't see it. That was kind of weird. Um, I don't think the mountain lion theory holds any water. I don't think the bear theory holds any water I, either. You would see blood, you would see remains, there would be things missing. So I don't think animal predation is a good explanation of what happened here at all. Now, what about people? Well, the people explanation holds a little bit more water, but not that much in my opinion, especially when we take into account what happened with the search dogs. That's strange as well. 
But this is where Missing 411 gets really interesting. What if we introduce a supernatural element? Well, even then, it doesn't really even make sense. Let's take into account what we know from the hiker story and from what we know about the search dogs. The search dogs went over some hills, through some bushes, whatever, and then ended up on the top of a mountain before walking in a circle and sitting down. Well, assuming it was some kind of a Sasquatch, you can imagine that's not what would have happened at all. <laughs> the Sasquatch trail would probably look a lot more like some other animal trail rather than going to the top of a mountain and just magically disappearing. I don't think that's how Bigfoot works. So even if you introduce something a little more supernatural, the story still doesn't make sense. What about aliens? Well, that doesn't make any sense either because the aliens would not not have left the scent trail at all. They probably would not have been on the side of a mountain either. So even when you try to introduce supernatural explanations to these missing 411 cases, they still don't make any rational or logical sense. What we do know, however, is that Alfred was taken by something that day. What it was, I don't know. I don't think anyone can really determine. So what sh should our takeaway be from this? Well, one, if you have small children, please take them out into the wilderness, but please be on your guard. I think another thing, you should always be armed, in my opinion. If you're going anywhere even remotely like the wilderness, you should probably have some type of a weapon on you, a serious weapon like a gun of some kind if you can bring that. If it's some kind of national park or there's some weird laws you don't want to get caught breaking, well, figure out a way around them. But seriously, I don't know why people go into the wilderness unarmed. I That just completely blows me away. That's one takeaway from the story. Another takeaway is that there's probably things going on beyond our understanding and comprehension. There's probably beings and organisms of some kind that exist in the less touched areas of this country that we should be conscious you know, we might not have discovered them. They might have completely evaded detection for years and years and years. Maybe they're known to government entities, but you know, why would they ever disclose anything cool to us? <laughs> they don't, they're not exactly good at that. So guys, I highly encourage in every video that you go out, you go explore, you know, even on your own, you know, be careful, but take your gear and train, but be conscious. You are probably not as alone out there as you think you are. Guys, I know there's a raging debate on the internet right now. What's better, spring or fall, summer and winter? The truth is, guys, it is all beautiful. It is going to be just as beautiful out here in the winter as it is in the fall. It's going to be just as pretty in the spring as it is in the winter. And the summer is going to make everything that much more beautiful. If you love nature, you will find beauty wherever you go. I stole that quote from somewhere. Anyway, guys, it is fall, though, so make sure go make some chocolate chip cookies with your grandma like I did. Go out in the woods, eat them, enjoy. Make sure to bring a gun, though, so you don't, you don't become a missing 4-in-1 case. Have a wonderful day, guys. Can't wait to talk to you again soon.